She's, she's a, a big girl. <laughs> that venom now will get changed into light setting into them. G'day guys, welcome back to Venom Doros. Today's a fun one. We are looking back to some of our favorite moments with Funnel Web Spiders. And I've got the fabulous Emma here. Uh, Emma, you have been involved in the program for quite some time now. Um, tell me, what is your favorite part of the role in the Venom program? I just think it's incredible that these little guys here save people's lives, taking the raw venom from them and making it into anti-venom, like fighting fire with fire. It's wild. It's wild. It's I still crazy. can't believe that we actually use venom to make anti-venom. It's, yep. it's crazy. And no death since the inception. That's right. There hasn't been a single fatality since anti-venom has been available. What's been a standout moment? You got to have helped film a bunch of venom diaries and socials and stuff. What's been a standout moment for you? Do you remember the time you fell down a hole? Oi. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't remember that. So, <laughs> sit back, enjoy, have a laugh, and um, we'll see you all for the next episode. Alrighty, so we are literally only a few hundred meters from the park, that way, and this is the habitat that funnel webs love, that cool, dense, dark forest. So there's some old rubbish piles up here. We're gonna go and have a bit of a dig around that. Old tin, timber and so on and see if we can find any. But yeah, this is what they love. Cool, dense, humid areas. Um, and they burrow into it and um, hang around. And the females, you know, they can live for like over 20 years and they can have literally the same burrow for a very, very long time. There's lots of insects out here, um, which the spiders will be feeding on. They're sunning opportunities for their eggs. Um, when they have egg sacs, so let's go have a look. Bit of food. <laughs> <laughs> no spider. <laughs> but that is like prime um, real estate for a spider. All right, so yeah, we'll have a bit of a geezer through this little stack here. Oh, frog! What? <laughs> Show me. <laughs> oh, cute. Striped Marty. Red bellies love to eat these things. Probably not the biggest, the spiders. Probably a bit quick, but go back under there, mate. Oh, all right. That's an old pipe. Oh, webbing. Oh, oh, you put the spider right there. <laughs> hey, hold on, I'm going to lose that. I'll go get um, tongs and stuff. There, but oh, won't. she's massive. She could be gravid. It's right there. There's her burrow. I'd say she's making her way out to get a bit of sun this morning. Because they don't come right out into the sunlight, but they just sit close enough that a bit of heat comes through. Can we take that block out of the way for you? Um, yeah, put that. Oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> don't lose her. All right. Stress levels are high. I do not want to lose this spot out. Please don't walk too fast, sweetheart. Okay, so, just gonna... Got her. You wouldn't read about it, it's walked straight in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, she's, she's a, a big girl. unit. So if you want to relocate a spider that has come into your home or in your backyard, popping it in a jar just like this one is absolutely perfect. And as you notice, even the professionals use long utensils just like these spoons. Now, uh, to keep her alive for longer while she is on her journey to us at the park, we always recommend that you get a little bit of damp soil or a wet cotton bud and pop that in there for her. And that's going to help her breathe. So what we can do is we can come along just in a similar spot to where we found her. We can scoop up some soil, making sure that uh, there's nothing there that she can escape out of that jar for us. Scoop up just a little bit of soil, enough like that, damp enough to be able to ensure that she's got some moisture in that. Popping that in the side of her enclosure, popping the lid on nice and tight, and you can see there, she's perfectly fine. She could survive in that for even a week or so, although we don't recommend it. Get her to the park as quick as possible, and uh, yeah, she could drop some babies for us and go into making life-saving anti-venom. Oh, yeah, ripper. Yeah, I've done that before. That's an Emmy. Woo! Oi! <laughs> <laughs> I fell into a hole. Are you okay? Yeah. I'm all right. <laughs> 
I come over that and just went straight in and just went straight over. <laughs> <laughs> I would help you, but then no one would hold the phone to You're film You're standing it. there filming. <laughs> oh yeah, this is a good spot. Good spot, Bill. I love this foam, eh? This has been here a long time by the looks of it. Watch your fingers. <sighs> what do you reckon? Oh, that's something there. Yeah, I think you've got one. Oh, I can see abdomen right there. I'll, I'll hold this. Up? I'll hold this. You get in. Right. You better yeah, get it. Get her first. Girl. That's a big girl. That's a girl. Yeah. It's not a mousey, eh? No, no it's funny. No, she's chunky like a mousey. If you um want to know what a mouse spider is, look on Emma's spider page. Emma. Oh, Emma Teeny Spiders. Emma Teeny underscore spiders. That's one. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, she's baby. huge. She's, she's, I reckon she's got babies in her for sure. Bit of soil. Yeah, Emma, you did a, a mouse spider video the other day, didn't you? Yeah, we filmed on the other day because we we're getting so many coming in at the moment. And they do look a lot like a funnel web spider and yeah. also capable of getting a very nasty bite. Yeah. Yeah, so you can use the same first aid for. Um... Same first aid and a bad envenomation can see you receiving funnel web spider antigen. Oh, I reckon that'll do, you reckon? Just two? Yeah, yeah. We can go home, how's these guys up? In a couple of months, yeah, they'll drop their eggs and... Because, yeah, but between those two, you can get a, like a, literally a few hundred bottlings, yeah? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> this is the spider, what we call the spider container. It's nothing overly flash yet, but what we're working on is we want to be able to just breed funnel webs and not really rely on public donations because for the last 40 or so years, we've been relying on public donations for, for funnel webs. And sometimes, you know, we have good years and then we have bad years depending on, you know, whether it's hot and dry or cool and wet. So Emma has successfully bred funnel webs. They've really been bred in captivity and Emma's done it. She's mastered it. So what you can see here is, do you say it's 5,000? Yep. 5,000. We, we cracked 5,000 last breeding season. Isn't that insane? Yeah. <laughs> There's 5,000 spiders in this room. Yeah, so I've doubled it in the last two years. Yeah, right. That's hectic. Yeah. So um, every year we have effectively a cohort of spiders. And so what I do is I move them along. It takes about four years for them to mature. So these are the babies which we hatched last year, 2024. Uh, 2023. 2023 was a big year, so we've got more 2023, and then 2023 are to here. Then we've got our 2022 babies, 2022 babies, 21. Here we have 2020, 2019. These guys are probably females, uh, but we keep them just that little bit longer. Once they don't molt uh, into a male, then we'll release them out into the wild. And then here are our wild caught spiders. Now these ones are juveniles, so they haven't matured into a male yet, but it's likely that they will mature into a male. So they're uh, in sizes. So in every single one of these jars, there's a spider and they get fed every week, if not fortnightly. We've doubled our spider breeding facility because we've um, been so successful. So this is the space ready for the next cohort of spiders. So the babies that we hatch from these guys and um, the females are really, really, really sensitive. So in the old container, we just had a curtain. In this one, we have a special nursery room. As we were mentioning earlier, the spiders that look like they are gravid when they come in, we set them up here, basically just don't touch them. I'll feed them fortnightly, make any um, observations on their little observation sheets. And with any luck, when it hits that September time of year, We'll bump the temperatures a little bit up in here, encourage the spiders to drop their egg sacs. Again, leave them as undisturbed as possible. Like I'm talking literally only open this door once a fortnight to feed and they'll drop their egg sacs. The mums know best, so we'll leave them raising their egg sacs. We'll pull them around December and then hatch them and raise the babies. And then they'll live out here. Uh, and then down here, these are our breeding boxes. So we've actually been pairing spiders. So we set them up, get the females nice and established in her home. And then once she's got lots of webbing, which indicates that she's probably pretty receptive to a male, we'll drop the male in and then he'll come along, drum on her web, letting him know that he's actually, a, boop, boop, boop. Tch, tch, tch. he's actually a date, not a cricket to eat. And then if she's receptive to him, they'll have a little bit of mum and dad time and produce more babies. How's that? If he doesn't do the drumming, she thinks he's food and comes up and smokes him. Or if he drums wrong, she just smokes yeah. him anyway. <laughs>
It's got to be the perfect performance. And then he still Absolutely. gets eaten. Yep, yep. What yep. a show. Yeah, it's a um, good time not to be a spider. Yeah. They're, they're actually really good mums, the Insanely females. Insanely Like they, they rotate the eggs, mm -hmm. they carry them up into the sun, they give them a bit more temperature, bring them back down, literally up and down, eh? Yeah, yeah. And protect them ferociously. Yeah, yeah. Insane. So the, the process of taking the mum away from their babies is so, it's on eggshells. <laughs> it's <laughs> stressful. Because, um, yeah, she could pierce that egg sack in minutes all over. But, um, yeah, yeah they're it's, great, great mums. It's weird. Like, if she stresses during the period, she just eats them. Yeah. So, like, she goes from this, like, super sensitive mum to, like, oh, conditions are wrong, boom, and just eats her own babies. Gone. So, yeah, yeah, it's wild. And it's really upsetting. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a spider container. Now we're going over to our spider milking room over in the Lost... Uh, in Spider World, right next okay. to the Lost Spider Reptiles. <laughs> um, where, how many funnels have you got in there at the moment? Nearly 200. All adults, yeah? All adults. All adult males. So they're all in the anti-venom program. Okay. Beauty. This is our funnel web milking area. Uh, behind the curtains we have our spiders and we have the curtains there because it's just kind of like a burrow for them. So behind here we have our container bred spiders. We were in the container earlier. And then here we have our wild caught spiders. So these are the ones that we get from public donation. So super duper important. There's over a hundred of them right here right now um, from those public donations. So what happens is we come in here, we have all of the stuff we need here for milking. We have a little hose, which is on a little suction thing that we turn on, uh, and we have a pipette. So our pipettes are in here. They're a glass pipette. They're lined with silicon so the venom doesn't stick to them. You select a good one of those out, grab a jar to put the venom into, just like that little glass jar. And um, then we need spiders. So I'll grab some spiders down off the uh, bench up here. So when we get them down, these guys are super reactive and super sensitive. So if I shake them, they'll drop the venom and then it's effectively pointless. So I'll just grab a couple of them down and then I'll pop them back away so they don't get all sensitive. I'll turn that suction on, which I was telling you about. And then I'll grab some gloves because that venom, if it even gets on a scratch, it goes into your bloodstream um, and I don't want that. All right, so gloves on. We've got our female spider here on display, so I'll pop her uh, out of that little safety square there. So the concept with the safety square is they can't climb a smooth surface. If they're in the safety square uh, and they do happen to get out of that enclosure, they're not gonna get out of the safety square. All right, so that hose is there. Pop the pipette on. And then that creates just a little bit of suction. And that's enough to suck up the droplets of venom. Coming down here and in here, We've got a male Sydney funnel web. This one's come to us from McMaster's Beach, so here on the coast. Making sure the lid only comes off once it's in the safety square. Now that's a pretty standard size spider. It's not a huge spider by any means, but definitely enough to pack a punch. And they've got little hairs all over them and they're so sensitive that even just a puff of air is enough to make them stand up. So I'll just do a little puff on him and you can see he's already getting ticked off. And a little tap and he will turn around. You could actually see that venom already dropping off those fangs there. So that there is enough, it'll kill you. And I just come in here with the pipette, suction that off there. And that, in comparison to our brown snake. Look at that, look how small that is. That is going to kill you without antivenom. So prior to 1981, if you were to be bitten by one of these spiders, you'd probably have a, a pretty poor outcome. However, since the invention of antivenom in 1981, that venom now will get changed into life-saving antivenom. Oh, I, it... You can't even barely see it. So in there, that will crystallise, and then uh, we use the acetic acid to get it out. But yeah, something, if I scratch Bill with that now, he'd be envenomated. Please don't do that. I will not do that. Yeah, you can see why Emma's obviously so passionate about the program, but also why she's working so hard on breeding them so we can produce more venom. And because these spiders only live for 12 months, whereas your snakes will live for years. So each, yeah. each male spider has a natural lifespan of 12 months, meaning that we need every year more spiders. Yeah, once once they mature, the boys, they're not programmed to live for very long. They literally mature, come out, they've got one thing on their mind and that's chasing sealers. And normally the first sealer they find turns around and eats him. 100%. So <laughs> yeah, every time. You know, he cruises in, it's like going to the pub for the first time, he's super excited, gets down that burrow, finds that good looking sealer and then does his thing and then she goes, right I mate, boom Jump. and eats him. Gone. <laughs> I guess it's a good way to go out, but still. 
<laughs> so yeah, it, it takes about 150 to 200 milkings to create one vial of antivenom. And I think the record's about 13 to 15 vials to save one bite victim. So it's, it's a huge job and we need lots of spiders because we rely on the spiders to be able to get that venom for the antivenom. So what Emma's going to do now is she's going to do a flush with a type of, what's the acid you use again? Acetic acid. Acetic acid. It's like fancy so, vinegar. Yeah, it's like fancy vinegar. <laughs> so she'll flush it out into um, one of these little bottles she's got here. And then from there, it's the same process as a snake. So we freeze it and then freeze dry it. So we're actually processing funnel web venom at the moment um, this week. Uh, it's in the, the freeze dryer for a little bit longer. It's normally in there for you know, a total of about five days. Um, so we pop it in there, because it, it kind of goes, uh, it crystallizes, and so that acetic acid will um, make the venom go back into a liquid form again, so we can get it out of that pipette. So I hold it on there for a little bit. You can actually, if you see really, really close, it's probably too hard to see on the camera, but it actually bubbles a little bit as it crystallizes, the crystals um, dissolve. And then we get our little fancy machine and pop it in there. And uh, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, three spiders in there. However, I put about a uh, quarter of a mil of acetic acid in there. So I'd say most of that is the acid. It's wild. It's so small. So small. Alrighty guys, I hope you enjoyed that episode. Please, if you wanna know anything more about what's involved with our Funnel Web Spider program, drop them in the comments. Any information, all right? Make sure you also check out our socials. So uh, my Insta, Emma's got a fabulous Instagram which has bulk spider content. Um, anyway, you guys know the drill. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you all for the next episode.